morning, guys. All right. So, just made it up. Uh, the first ascent um, coming out of Orange Parkway or Turnpike. I think it's Orange Turnpike. Um, so this will be our first full but second day in New York. Um, <clears throat> you can see New York started off with a bang, left sort of an impression. Uh, the first about mile and a half of today is going to be the same thing. And so I just came up a rock crawl, hands and knees sort of thing. And now reach the top of that and I'll turn around and go right back down and I can see the next rise right in front of me. So it's definitely this sawtooth. Um, the first significant uh, event will be the lemon squeezer. That's in four miles, I believe, from my start point. Uh, so that should be interesting. I'll definitely bring you along for that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be one who has to, has to take my pack off or if I can get through, but either way, <clears throat> that is, you know, one of the definitely noted iconic spots on the trail. So look forward to that. Um, not entirely sure where I'm going. Um, the terrain's gonna dictate a lot. I think the weather's supposed to be pretty nice today. Uh, 70s. Um, reading AWOL's book and Fozzie's book. Um, Foscat is his first name. James, maybe James Foscat. Uh, the Englishman uh, balancing on blue. Reading, they had different impressions of this area, but both of them. You know, this area was definitely sort of a meat grinder and it, uh, you know, leaves you sweating like a dog. I think Fozzie came through, it was like 100 degrees, so I am seriously thankful it's not that. And frankly, I'm seriously thankful it's not raining. Because um, these rocks would be very slippery and treacherous in that condition. So believe me, I'm thankful for what I get. Uh, let's see, so, let's see, we're right back up it. Um, so I could go to Bear Mountain um, Recreational Center. There's an inn there, that's 20.7, which is again spot on my 20 mile mark I would like to be doing. Um, oven. And Webster and I, who ended up staying at the Tuxedo Motel last night, uh, and actually got showers, laundry, food. That was really good for me. Four days out, that's a good time for me to sort of clean up a little bit, just feel like a human. We didn't Nero in or Nero out, but it's nice just to, it was only two miles off trail just to jump out, stay in that civilization for that overnight and then go right back at it. So we did 20.2 yesterday, um, potentially 20.7 today, but they're planning on going to the Franciscan Monastery, which is at 26 miles. Um, so that's an option, of course, for me as well. Or the other thing that we have been kicking around <clears throat> for the last two days, given what New York looks like, um, is to do a 24 hour here. So we know we're not gonna be doing, you know, the huge 24 miles, 24 hours that you talk about when you hear about Dixie doing 62 miles or others doing 50 something miles 
on a 24 hours um, because it just takes too long to get up and down these rock climbs. But the sooner we get out of New York, I think the sooner all of us will be happier. So a 24 hour um, would be, let's just say it gives us 45 miles. So yesterday with 15 and 45, that's 60 of the 83. So you got a 23 mile day and you're out of New York. That's three days in New York. Although obviously there's some rest period in there because you're not gonna do 24 hours and then just kick into a new day. So it might be a good option. The other thing is that Webster is timing his movements for the arrival of his dad and the arrival of his sister. They're gonna do some hiking together. So he's gonna go into tens for a period of three days or four days or something like that. So the short of it is, is that the odds are last night was our last night together as a group. Um, the other guys, uh, Torino and Shortcuts, are now, <clears throat> you know, about uh, maybe 15 miles behind us. And um, Turmoil and Mongrel are 20, I can tell you exactly, 20.2, because they stayed at that Wanapana, Pana, Panuka uh, shelter, whatever that, you know, remember the crazy name, shelter we stayed in the night before. They're there. So they went from the secret shelter to there, just exactly uh, what we did. And then, <clears throat> um, so I know exactly where they are. Uh, now, Spider is sort of dropped off from yesterday, I don't know whether she wasn't feeling well or something just wasn't clicking yesterday. So she pulled up short. We thought she'd probably stay with us at the 20.2 since she was looking at the 26, but she ended up pulling short at 16 and just stealth camping. Um, <clears throat> so those are the sort of whereabouts of everyone. It's sort of too bad to lose this group because uh, we have some good mileage days together. I mean, we've had 20s to 25 consistently since we got together, basically. And that's been really good. And then everybody sort of pushes each other, but nobody is crazy. I mean, Oven is by far the fastest and could go the longest ways. I mean, she's young, tall, fast, competitive. So she could be pulling 30s without question, but she's willing to hold up. Um, and so because of that, she's a good trail leader. Um, but doesn't run away from us. She just runs away during the day and then holds up, waits. Uh, I'm probably the second fastest. Um, so I'm yeah, pretty much consistently, I'm behind Oven. And then Webster's right behind me. Webster has sort of a, you know, more laissez-faire approach to it. He's a great hiker and he could do, he can do the miles, but you know, he likes to break too and read his book or take a nap or do whatever, uh, which I found actually stopping and getting lunch at some restaurant or something is not only nice as far as keeping your ba food bag a little smaller and having a nice sort of uh, town meal, but also, if you time it right, like 1.30 or something, 
then you go basically one, keep out of the warmest part of the day and then hike a little bit more into the evening but it's it's it gets really nice out here about five that five to five thirty to six um you know the six thirty sort of time frame you can get really good miles done during that period because it's cool and it's comfortable and enjoyable just like the mornings so anyway um that's where we are and that's where everybody is and to the degree that there is any sort of plan that is it Webster and i had just stopped spoke for a few minutes and then i left came around the corner and there was Pee-wee's stepmom. Pee-wee and Pee-wee's dad started at the creamery. We started yesterday. They're coming to 17 miles um, to just before, I think it's Interstate 87. Um, and so she's doing trail magic right there. And yeah, it was awesome. Great to meet her. Great to hear about where Pee Wee is. I guess she took a she to shoot back over here. Pretty little spot. I guess she took a zero yesterday. So it allowed me to catch that day up. If you remember, I came out of Palmerton. I went ahead, but then I stopped at the gap. Delaware Gap and Pee Wee didn't she moved through so then she was ahead then she took a zero um wherever that creamery was what was that town I want to say Daleville but that was not Daleville anyway they went into the city and then she and her dad got on a trail today to hike that 17 miles. That's a tough 17 miles for somebody who isn't backpacking all the time. So I give a lot to her dad. You'll want to look for that video and see how he does on those rock climbs. Because he is a man and a half. He should be in a kilt if he pulls that off. By God. His wife says he will. So, given Pee Wee's personality, I figure if she got it somewhere, he probably will. But that is definitely one to look out for. That would be an interesting video. I'll be checking that one out myself. Okay, came up above this hill. Saw these two rocks. And it makes me think of one thing. The lemon squeezer. So, let's see what we got. Oh! You coming through? No. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this. With pack on. Doing the YouTube channel, so. Right, right on. <laughs> oh. Good thing I lost 35 pounds. Right? <laughs> oh, look at me, I think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm gonna make it. It's tight. Those 35 pounds, they helped, they helped.
the famous or infamous lemon squeezer. Uh, uh, woo -hoo! Okay. Hey guys. So, <clears throat> made it through the lemon squeezer, as you saw. And as I was going through the lemon squeezer, you notice the rise immediately in front of that the rock. You'll see a tree to the left of the screen. And there's like a narrow, little narrow path <coughs> to the right of it. And I tried to get up it like three or four times, uh, twice with my pack. Then I took my pack off, threw it up <coughs> through that space, then tried to follow the pack up. It wouldn't work. So I had to hug the tree and shimmy around the tree <coughs> to the left side of it to go through the narrow gap on that side. So it was, uh, yeah, a lot of fun actually. <coughs> good fun, a good challenge. And the reason I came up really <coughs> was to say that uh, doing that really sort of kicked me into a little bit of a different mindset from yesterday and today when I was becoming increasingly agitated with the design, maintenance, and everything of the trail to sort of, hey, look at this, <clears throat> you know, as a fun sort of obstacle course. Remember I kept mentioning that the canine obstacle course down in North Carolina. Well, that one wasn't fun because you weren't really doing anything tactile. You were just sort of, you know, running in circles to try to hit rock, rocky areas to, to hike up. But this is a little bit more diverse and let's face it, it's gonna become increasingly so <clears throat> as we head north. So to sort of try to grab a hold of this feeling that I have right now to change it so that my perspective as I enter as I continue through New York, but also enter the um, New England states, is to sort of look at this maybe as more of a challenging obstacle course and maintain sort of a, you know, happy, positive perspective of it <clears throat> instead of letting it just drag me down or irritate me. <clears throat> and I think you have to go through these personality conversions and these um, different views and outlooks as you adapt to new environments, just like I did for more than 30 years as an intelligence officer living in different places. Each one was uniquely challenging and you just adapted. <clears throat> Well, it's sort of the same thing here. So that's a strength of mine. Doesn't mean I won't have or express to you the, uh, you know, my, the internal struggle or turmoil as you go through that process. Um, but hey, <clears throat> that's exactly what's happening in, you know, a sort of brief period of time as we go through each of the states. So. Anyway, I just thought it was an, you know, it, it, that sort of perspective grabbed me. And so I thought I'd just pass it on and let's see how it works going forward. What an awesome sign. The two that matter to us, Bear Mountain Bridge. That's where I'm thinking probably stop today, 15.9 means, you know, okay, I haven't gone a great big deal, but um, 4.1. But Mount Katahdin, Maine, 793. 793.
<clears throat> under 800 miles of 2200, pretty much, 2190.6, under 800 miles. Wow, what a beautiful little spot, huh? Clouds are awesome. Tree lines. And the flowers. Look at that beautiful tree. Is this Bear Mountain? No. What's this shelter, do you know? Oh, yeah, I got my gut hooked too. Well, there's a big parking lot down there for whatever this is. <laughs> so it's obviously popular. West Mountain. I just want to give you a shot of approach up Bear Mountain. See the stairs wind around, down all the way. See the roadbed below. Yeah, it's... Oh, you see what we got ahead. spider we got a uh, web strap ahead of her and farm all up ahead of him so there's a number of us today of the group that has been together now some of us for three weeks, almost a month, and some of them were together longer. So, I'll pull you off here as they keep going. There's Webster coming from the concession machine here on Barrow Mountain. And Farm All. Spider. Oh, wait, there's nothing. There's a uh, right there. Oh, the water. 